How are you? Fourth. <laughs> Where are you right now? At the office. What was that? Where are you? Office. office. At work? Right. I like your Green Bay Packers shirt. Thank you. <laughs> How are okay. you? Well? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. How are you? What do you do? What kind of job? Systems. What was that? System engineer. Oh. I am going to get my headphones, so maybe I can hear you better. Yeah, but I have a lot of noise here. Okay, one second. Yeah. Hello. Is it Chu? Hi, teacher. Hello, Chu? Hi, can you hear me? Hold on one second. Okay. Hello? Can you, can you hear Hi. Me? Hi. Yes. yes, now I can. How are you? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm great. Good. How nice to you? meet you. I'm good. Nice to see you. Um, where are you from? I'm from China. You're from China? Where in China? Uh, Beijing. Beijing. I love Beijing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a wonderful uh, city. <laughs> what was that? Um, okay, so today we are going to be talking about Rome. Have either of you ever been to Rome? No, I haven't. No? Yes. Yes, you have? Yeah, a couple of times. A couple times. What have you done in Rome? Were you a tourist or were you working? Yeah, tourism. Yeah, I went one, uh, one time uh, to some office because uh, my my company when I work in Italy sent me over there. Mm -hmm. um, but the other times I, I was like a, like a tourist. Yeah. What did you see when you were in Rome? Everything, I guess. <laughs> uh, the Coliseum, uh, the Forum, uh, and other things. There's so much to see. When I went there, I huge, I let myself huge. get lost. Like every time I went down a street, I would see something new. I didn't really need a map. <laughs> it's a chaotic city, in my opinion. It's huge. It's a ginormous city. Um, okay. So today we're going to start. But I want you to hold on one second. <laughs> Reading my question. Okay, I want you to look around the room that you're in and see what kind of objects are in the room. Um, and see who they belong to. Does anything belong to you? Is anything yours? I, I am right now. Okay, so I want you to tell me, like, who things belong to. We're going to use possessive pronouns today. So tell me, like, um, the computer is his or the desk is hers. Things that belong to other people. I would like you to tell me about things that are in the room and who they belong to. Wherever you may be. This is good for you, Federico, because you're not even in your house. <laughs> uh, can, I, can I start? Yes, go for it. Okay. Um, the computer that I, I am using right now is not mine. Okay. Uh, um, from, from the from the bank. 
belongs to the bank. Okay. Um, um, for example, um, I don't know. Ah, oh, the cell phone. You right know, it's mine. Okay. Who is that on the back wall? The picture. Your Iglesias. You know him? Who is it? Then let, let me let me write it down on the chart. Okay. Julio Iglesias. I have heard of him. I need to look up who that is. Off Famous the top of my ace. head. Yeah. <laughs> A famous singer. Okay, I'm not sure. Spanish singer? Huh. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> He's pointing. pointing is, that your, is it your picture? No, no, no. No? <laughs> no. Okay. All right, good. Thank you. And Chu, can you tell me? Yeah. Uh, I'm now in my roommate's room, and no? uh, on the desk, we have uh, I have four laptops. One is Mac, is belonging to my roommate, okay. and I I I have two laptops, and uh, I also bought two Nexuses for my classmates. Wow. Why so many computers? Just they're it's, all different people's and <laughs> uh, two, one PC is uh -huh. um, one PC and a, a Mac. It, okay. It's belonging to my roommate. And you need uh, them for different things? Yeah, and uh, the um, the other two laptops is belong to me. Okay. It's mine. Yeah. And uh, also two Nexus okay. I bought for my classmates. Wow. A lot of computers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you. Anything else in the room you can tell me about? Yeah, and we have a bathroom. Uh, one, one bath. I mean, it's blind to my roommate. And okay. there are three, four cases. And four Box. what? Cases, boxes, which can fill it in. Uh, causes and other stops. Okay. Yeah. I think it's shoes, right? Shoes. Shoes. Yeah. That's, uh, target. Okay. Suit. For it's suits. A it's a box. Um, a suit is like a, a type of clothing. Type of clothing. Uh, mm -hmm. No, it's not clothing. Like and a suitcase? Case, yeah. A suitcase, yeah, a suitcase. Yeah, three cases belong to the guests. They are no um um they are no on their trip in yeah. U in US and uh, the rest of the cases belong to my room. Belong to my room. Very good. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so good. We're gonna work on possessive pronouns today, so you both use those well already. So words like mine, his, hers, ours, theirs. So I heard you both use mine. Okay. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Um, in pronunciation today, before we look at any articles or anything. Um, we're going to work on an S sound. So with an S at the end of words, we often add S to the end of words for uh, plural words or um, there can be multiple usages, but um, a common issue for many people can be the S in plural words, and there can be three different sounds this can make. Um, to add it to the endings of plural nouns in third person singular verbs and possessive pronouns, we have um, three different endings. And these are like a snake. So that's one. 
Um, the next one is like a buzzing bee, like zzzz. And the last one is is. So the sound is. It's kind of like a iz. Is. And that third one we will use when we have um, more than one syllable. So that's for the plural words like um, watches. Um, let me see. I'm looking at a watch. That's why I said that. Um, potatoes. Potatoes. Um, coffees. <laughs> it's early. I'm just looking at things that I'm seeing. <laughs> Pens. <laughs> That's only one syllable. But plural words. Um, so it's that is sound added to the end of words that are often plural. Um, so then we have the other two, are s and z. And how we make this sound is we can um, touch our throat, so you can feel this. Um, you should not feel anything when you're talking. But when you put your teeth together and go, you should kind of feel a vibrating. Or, I'm sorry, you, you shouldn't feel it vibrating. That's for our next one. Um, you should feel nothing. It should be like a snake. Like a s um, and the other one is you should feel a z, a vibrating. Z. And the first one, we use it for words like walks, bets, tops. The next one, uh, the z the vibration kind of sound. We will use for words like films, records, walls. It's a voiced sound. Um, and it's this vibration. And then the is, the ending, um, will be plural words. So watches, purses, roses. Can you guys think of any other examples? Um, I want to know that um, if there are words and with uh, um, R sound, like R controlled words, what kind of uh, S, S, or is? Uh, with R? Yeah, R controlled um, words like her, her. Hers? Her. Yeah, hers. So it's uh, oh, so like a po the possessive hers? Yeah. So that'd be hers. It's a uh, sound. Hers. Yeah, the voiceless like a uh, snake. Hers. Uh, her. Hers. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. We also have theirs. So third person. Ah uh, yeah. Theirs. Theirs. Ours. Hours. Hours. And that's more of a buzzy. Hours. Yeah. To me, I, I can hear a uh, z song. Yeah. And it might help if you um, put your hand on your throat and kind of feel it. Hours. Rather Hours. than like forcing the sound in your ears, it might help if you feel it. Hours. But actually, they are all end with the R sound, right? They all R. have R at the end. Yeah, but hers. they pronounce it different, like hers. Hers. It's also a Z, um, but, or S. Hers, ours, theirs. I you think know, it's, it's, a very, it's a very sound. soft sound. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, theirs, hers. Um, it's hard for me to tell even. Um, I would, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Ours, hers, theirs. I guess it's more of a buzzy sound. Okay. Yeah. Ours, hers, theirs. You could do a buzzy sound. Yeah. Because yeah. it's uh, difficult for me too. Yeah, I know this. I noticed that uh, when I it's not like very strong though. Some words you would definitely do a very strong 
like, um, like that is or films, records, walls, like you can really hear it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You guys have any other questions? No. Okay. So possessive pronouns are based on three different things. First is gender, so male, female, or neutral. Um, the dog is his, so his. The cat is hers, hers is a girl, his is a boy. And then neutral, the house is theirs. So we don't know if theirs is male or female. In the first person, second person or third person, um, you could have first person, the last piece of cake is mine. Second person, we could have the problem is yours. Or the third person, the car is theirs. And then we could have a singular or plural possessive pronoun. So the singular is the apples are his. And then the plural, the horse is theirs. So his or hers and theirs. So one person or many people. Any questions about those? No. No? Okay. All right, second, possessive pronouns can be the subject or the object of a sentence. And they don't change their form based on either use. So in the subject, we could say, yours are the best. So yours are the subject. Not sure without the context what yours are, but yours are the subject. And if it's the object, we could say, Jenny really liked ours. So whatever ours is, it's the object of the sentence. Um, we could talk, be talking about like cookies, computers, whatever. Um, third, although we will not talk about them completely right now, um, don't mix up possessive pronouns with possessive adjectives. So the main difference is that possessive adjectives usually go directly before for the noun. So, for example, her cat is climbing the fence. His cars are parked in the front yard. So instead of saying, like, um, the cat is his, the cars are his, um, you'd say the um, her, her cat, his cars. So those are possessive adjectives instead of possessive pronouns. And we have a whole list here. I'm trying to think of a way to give this to you that is not confusing. Um, actually, I can ask you because I feel like you might have a good grip on this. Um, I have a question? Yeah, oh. go for it. Yeah, I can. I can understand the third um, use of the uh, like the pronouns. Are those if uh, pronounced like his car mm -hmm. or her her car? I can mm -hmm. understand this, but I'm not. Uh, I don't know whether I uh, already get the um, the meaning with the second with the second one. You said is uh, use possessive nouns as a subjective or objective. The subject or the object? Yeah, subject or object. Okay. Yeah, so, so it depends what we're talking about, like what the context of the sentence is. So let's say I'm talking about cookies. I would say, yours are the best. My mom made some cookies. I'm telling her, yours are the best. The cookies are the subject of the sentence. Yours, your cookies, are the best. That's the subject. Yours. Um, if I'm talking about the object, Jenny really likes ours. So, 
in in this sentence, ours is at the end. That is our possessive pronoun. Uh, I see. So uh, it's moved I, to the end of the sentence. Uh -huh. Okay. And the object is now the possessive pronoun instead of the subject. Okay, so it's uh, like a uh, grammar knowledge about the uh, possessive nouns. Like, if I want to use possessive uh, nouns as a subject, a subject, I mm -hmm. will use yours is so good. And mm -hmm. I, if I want to use possessive nouns as a um, object, object, I will use uh, this pen is mine. Yes. And the third one is about we, if we we can use possessive nouns um, by another um, by another um, form like uh, his pen is over there. Mm -hmm. so this is the whole knowledge you want to explain to me, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Um, so we have different subject pronouns based on the singular or the plural, uh, the number, and the gender. So number meaning like if it's first person, second person, third person, and whether the person is male or female. So his, hers. It will change. And first person. Do you know what first person is? Yeah, I. I. Second person. Do you know what second person is? You. You. Third person? Is. Yeah, he, she, it. Yeah. Okay. So in the singular, we have um, first person would be I. I, and the possessive pronoun would be mine. It is mine. In the second person, we have you, and the possessive pronoun would be, it is? Yours. Yours. In the third person, if it's a male, a boy, we have he, and it would be? His. His. What if it's a girl? Hers. Her. Hers. Hers. What if it's neither? What if it's dogs? Like, we don't know if it's a boy or a girl. His. It's, uh, it's, right, maybe? Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what that dog is. <laughs> Could be either. <laughs> it's. Um, and then we have um, myself and maybe a boy and a girl. Girl? So, many people all together. Um, it's plural. plural. You know what that's called? We. And our possessive. Oh, sorry, I just said it. The possessive pronoun for we. Do you know what that is? Ours. Ours. Um, and then the possessive pronoun for plural may be male and female. Um, there. 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 Um, if I'm talking to second person. A second person. Yeah, sorry. I should have mentioned that. Y yours. Yours. And then third person, male or male or female, theirs. Excellent. Good. Okay. Let me see if I can give you this list so you just have it. I don't know if it'll work to copy. Um, I want to ask about... Um, oh, that didn't really work. I'm sorry. Go for it, yeah. <laughs> well, like, actually, we use possessive nouns uh, also in this way, like Chinese or Chinese. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one is... Uh, I mean, the real situation for use Chinese or Chinese. Which one um, more more likely to be American style or both of them are okay or they have to use in different situations? Um, like Chinese colleges or China's colleges, what's it, is, is there any difference between the two? Yeah, there's a difference. Um, if you're gonna 
say that China's many colleges or like you're saying that China has many colleges? No, I want um, like I am talking with uh, yeah, let's imagine that I am talking with my friend mm -hmm. and I would tell him that um, uh, in Chinese colleges other okay. things uh, blah 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 and uh, in other situations yeah, I will say, I can also say uh, in China's colleges. So, is there any difference between the two expressions? Well, yeah, so if you're going to talk about if, um, let's say, China's, um, in China's, I'm trying to think of a good, <laughs> a good sentence where you can hear the difference. Okay. Um, in Chinese culture, da 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 da. So there is a difference in spelling. Um, in Chinese culture, it's typical to use chopsticks. Yeah. <laughs> that is spelled this way C H I N E S E. Yeah, it's right. Um, if you're going to talk about, like, in China's. Um, in China's universities, in China's universities, professors teach in this style. Yeah. Um, that would have an apostrophe. So we can't say China's culture. Then that would be this one, China's. Yeah. China owns something, so it's possessive, and it would have an apostrophe s. But that's different. Um, that is a possessive adjective. Possessive noun. It, it is possessive. It has an apostrophe s. Yeah, I, I can understand the, the form. They are different okay. Chinese and China's. Okay. And China's is a possessive uh, noun. Mm -hmm. right? And Chinese is just like an um, adjective. Mm -hmm. Adjective words to uh, describe the culture, yes. which is uh, special for, for China. Yes. So if you're talking about um, something that China has within, like a, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, um, China owns something. Yeah, owns something. China's, it's ownership. It's possessive. Um, in China's universities, in China's country, in China's um, in China's economy. journalistic practice, in China's economy, yeah, you would use an apostrophe s. China with an apostrophe s, and that yeah. goes for like any country, any nation you want to talk about. It would be the same same thing. It's a noun. So you want to add an apostrophe S. Yeah, I got a sense of it, but I, I need to get more information about it. I just a few I was puzzled with this okay. type of. Yeah, that's a different um, a different type of possessive um, topic than what we were discussing today. But we can definitely talk about that if if you want to. Um, um, no, that's. Go back to the um, law. Ten incredible things to do in law. Okay. Because you know what we could say, like in Rome's history, and that would be the same thing. Like yeah. in Rome. Sorry, I'm muted. Rome's apostrophe s. Rome history. Or in. Um, in Rome's metropolitan area, there are many things to see. The Rome apostrophe s. So it would be the same thing if you want to say like in in China's whatever whatever you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me send you this link. <clears throat> And I will screen share it with you.
Okay, Rome's top 10 attractions. Okay, is that big enough for you to see? <coughs> Rome's top 10 attractions. Visit Rome's ruins and cultural hotspots. <clears throat> the Eternal City celebrates its long history with monuments, churches, and restored ruins that offer a glimpse into life during the days of the Great Roman Empire. Here are our, our picks for the ten essential attractions to round out your visit to Rome. Colosseum. The Roman Colosseum is a testament to the architectural skills of the ancient Roman people and offers insight into the culture that celebrated the gladiator games at this huge entertainment arena. The first bloody fight in Sejan AD 82, starting a tradition of battles between men and beasts in, public, in a public forum with crowds reaching 50,000. Outside of the Colosseum, look out for the photo opportunity beneath the Arch of Constantine, which was built in 315 to commemorate the victory of Constantine over Marcus Aurelius Valerius Maxentius. <laughs> To avoid lengthy lines, order tickets online ahead of time. They're good for two consecutive days and include admission to the nearby Forum and Palatine Hill. Roman Forum. In ancient Rome, the Forum was the center of city life, playing host to festivals, celebrations, funerals, and rituals. The city grew around this grassy area that was empty marshland until the 7th century BC. The area lost its luster and fell to waste around the 8th century and remained this way until excavations in the early 20th century. Today you can pick up a map for a self-guided tour of the structure and arches or join a tour group for a more detailed history of the area. Then climb to the top of Pal Palatine Hill for sweeping views of the city. Teacher, can I try the next paragraph? Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Pantheon. Roma's temple to the gods is remarkably intact, a great feat considering that it was originally constructed in 27 BC and was later rebuilt in the early 2nd uh, century AD. After fire damage, an altar was later added for Christian, Christian worship after the, after the country abandoned its pagan gods. Pagan gods. After the res Renaissance, Renaissance is is right. Is it? The Renaissance. Renaissance. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That's After, a time period. Do you know the Renaissance? Yeah, I know the meaning, but I couldn't okay. pronounce it right. Okay. <laughs> Renaissance. That's. Renaissance. Renaissance. Good. The pavilion took on yet another role as a design designated town for some of the city's artists and the aliens, elite, including the painter Rob Hill and former kings of Italy. Okay. Raphael the Pantheon, is how Ra we, yeah, the PH is an F sound. F, Raphael. You know, like, like phone, telephone? Raphael mm -hmm. and former king of Italy. The pavilions Architecture has inspired copycats around the around the globe with its tall columns reaching towards the, the sky, expensive interior, and uh, impressive dome with the with the sun shining through the oculus. Good. A twenty a twenty seven foot hole in the center of the Rotunda. Excellent. <laughs> Would you like to try the next one too? Uh, yeah, sure. Vatican City. Even though it's located in Rome, Vatican City has been an inde independent state since 1929 with, with its own flag, coins, and stamps. It even has its own militant. Militia. Militia, good. Militia. The Swiss Guard, <coughs> which protects this state. The Pope, 
and uh, 800 full-time citizens and within residents. The first Im impressive site is St. Peter's Square, itself designed by Bernini in the late 17th century. As long as you are dressed appropriately, no bare shoulders or shorts or shorts or skirts about the knee, you may enter St. Peter's Basilica <laughs> and see Mike, Michael Angel, Angelos Pieta. Excellent. A stunningly beautiful and sad sculpture. Continue. Continue up to the roof where you can take in the view of the of the a large square and city beyond. Also contained in the Vatican's walls, the Vatican museums hold it Italian masterpieces, including Michelangelo's painted ceiling at the Sistina. Sistina. Sistine. Sistine. Sistine Chapel. Chapel. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Would you like me to read or would you like to do it? Uh, I think you can continue. <laughs> okay. That was very good. Thank you so much for reading. These are hard words because they're Italian and um, yeah. they're not all English, they're names. <laughs> yeah. uh, Piazza Navona. Rome is known for beautiful and charming squares lined with restaurants and open air cafes. The loveliest of them is all is the the loveliest of them all is the large public square at Piazza Navona, once the site of sporting events at Domitian Stadium in AD 89. The square contains three fountains, and the largest and most memorable is Bernini's Fountain of the Four Rivers, with each of the four statues representing a river from different continents. I was proposed to at Piazza Navona. <laughs> Somebody uh, asked me if I would marry them. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> I went to Rome by myself when I was um, 21, and I kind of wandered around everywhere and just found my way. And there were it was beautiful. There are so many fountains, and yeah. you can ah, do it. Actually, we can make a wish in front of the <gasps> yes, and at, throw at a the coin next into one. at Trevi ah. Fountain. Mm -hmm. This one is beautiful. Tra uh, Trevi Fountain. Travelers lore lists various reasons for throwing three coins in the fountain. Ah, the three coins. Trip. Yeah, so you okay. throw them over your back. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. The Marvelous Trevi, with benefits ranging from finding love to returning to the city. Once you've mastered your art of coin throwing and wished for the appropriate outcome, take some time to explore this Baroque masterpiece showing the god Neptune riding in a shell-shaped chariot led by seahorses. And you can feel good about your charitable donation as the money, nearly $3,500 each day, collected from the fountain is used to support food programs in the city's poor. For the city's poor. So that's cool. I didn't even know that. Yeah, me too. Galleria Borghese. Or Bor I think that's Borghese. The Galleria Borghese is just as beautiful on the outside as it is on the inside, boasting a prime location in the sprawling gardens at Villa Borghese. Inside the museum, you'll find Bernini sculptures, including Apollo and Daphne, and his take on young David preparing to take on Goliath. The impressive collection also includes work by master artists Correggio, Raphael, Rubens, and Car Caravaggio. Acquiring tickets will be your biggest challenge. The museum only admits 360 visitors every two hours, so you'll need to make reservations far in advance. Capuchin Crypt. While some may find the displays of bones and skulls a bit on the morbid side, the Capuchin Crypt, located under Our Lady of the Conception of the Capuchins, celebrates the life of the religious order of the Capuchin Friars. The Friars arrange the bones of the deceased into displays and frames for Christian artwork in various spots throughout the crypt, including the Crypt of the Skulls and the Crypt of the Resurrection. Not merely a macabre display, these creations tell the story of life, death, and resurrection, and show a unique interpretation of the church's teachings of good, evil, and eternity. Castel 
St. Angelo. This fortress on the Tiber River was originally designed by the Emperor Hadrian to be used as a mausoleum for his own family. And it was certainly a resting place fit for royalty, rising above the city with glorious views. Over the centuries, it moved beyond its original purpose and served as a military fortress in 401, and later a papal residence and even a prison. It's now a museum where you may tour the apartments and see the statue of the Archangel Michael rising above the terrace. Spanish Steps. The Spanish Steps may be the longest and widest staircase in all of Europe, but that's not what draws visitors to this popular tourist spot. A Barcacia fountain bubbles at the foot of the steps while the Trinita de Monte church rises above the crowds at the top of the steps. But the best spot is somewhere between the two. Take a seat in the middle of the wide staircase and watch the city go by as beautiful people hurry into the nearby high-end shops, designer boutiques, and restaurants. I think the Spanish steps were the busiest place I had been the entire time I was in Rome. <laughs> there were so many people. Yeah, because it's the longest and what is the staircase. Yeah. It was nuts. <laughs> okay. So, any words that you would like to go over? I know there are a lot of a lot of words. Yeah. But any that stand out to you that you would like to know the meaning of? Yeah, I know, I want to know that Bernini is an is a person's name or is a style like other Bernini? Bernini, yeah. Um it is a person's name. I don't think it's a specific style. Double check. It it is just a person. It's an oh. Italian artist, an architect. Yeah. Oh, actually, we can saw the picture. Uh, I mean, under they have a woman uh, who is very distressed. Yes. So yeah. if you Google him, he was a sculptor, um, and he he was in he used the Baroque style. Do you know Baroque? Baroque? Style, yeah. yeah. I, I know this style. Baroque yeah, style. Yeah, so he mainly worked in Italy. So he was just, it's just a name, it's not a style at all. Yeah, I think he made a, he made a very great contribution to the... Oh, definitely. Uh, ...to yeah. the city. Yeah, huge. Anything else? Any other words or names? Um, I think that's it. Um, okay. Well, cool. so you have not been to Rome, right? Yeah, I have not been. Would you to... like to go? Yeah, definitely, because it's a historical place with so many culture symbols in mm -hmm. there. And actually, I, I'm so I'm a big fan with uh, historian historical uh, places. Mm -hmm. And so. Famous like in movies and um, in history, like it just yeah, plays an important a role. Series. I saw a series. Uh, the name is Rome, and I think it's very interesting. To oh yeah, is that on a uh, like HBO or Showtime or something? Uh, yeah, but I I watched uh, all of the series, and I, okay. I think it's very interesting to know I've history. I've never and, watched uh, it. <laughs> Um, so tell me, which of these attractions seems most interesting to you? Fountains. The fountains? There are yes. so many. They're all so pretty, too. So you would like to see the fountains. Um, you mean which fountains I, need, I, I want to go? Um, sure. Which ones would you like to see most? Um, the which fountain? Which can? Oh, uh, the my dream? Come Trevi? Trevi, yeah. Yeah, Trevi, Trevi yeah. Fountain. It's and I saw a movie introduced the um, which one introduced introduced the the, the Trevi Fountain uh -huh. with a very um, lovely story. Was a, was it the one with Audrey Hepburn? No, uh, was the character uh, actor's name? I just don't know the Chinese name. I don't know oh, their okay. English name yet. That was a Chinese movie. No, it's not Chinese movie. Oh. I mean, we translate their name into Chinese, so I oh. got familiar with the Chinese thing, but I oh, don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Was it, um, was it an old movie? No, it's not an old movie. I think it's uh, released uh, maybe 20, 20, 2007 or 2008, I'm not sure. Uh, after 2008, I think. 
Hmm. It's a it's not it's a new movie. I think. It's not oh. a new East, but it's a new movie. Okay. Hmm. I wonder what it was. <laughs> uh, my friend was in a movie. That, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can think of when I like I think about Rome and I'm like I like think of scenes. And she is a because um, I met her. Yes. Yeah, well, she was. She's not anymore. Uh. But she was in a movie that was filmed in Rome, and it, she was in a TV show, and then they went and did this movie. So I uh, always think about, like, when I think of Rome, I'm like, ah! <laughs> you should be, you should be the, you could be the actress too, in that movie. I would be the worst actress. <laughs> I, I would, like, just laugh the entire time. <laughs> Actually, I am a, um... I am going to start school soon to be a journalist, and one of the books I had to buy was It Takes More Than Good Looks to Be on Camera. That's the title of the book. Ah, yeah, I think you, yeah. It's well, kind of... Uh, that made me laugh a lot. <laughs> so I was like, but I don't even it. want to be on camera. <laughs> you are a journalist. And uh, I think journalists always accept interviews by the TV or by other programs. I so mean, you have to get a used lot, to it. A lot of my peers went on to be on camera, uh, like on camera journalists. So I was in a cam uh, in a program. Oh really? Yeah, and it, I feel a little bit awkward when I was yeah. in, the, in, well, in front of a camera. You know? Yes. <laughs> I chose um, behind the scenes kind of work originally. Uh -huh. I did journalism behind the camera and film studies like behind the camera because I feel very awkward in front of the camera usually. Like doing this is fine because I Skype a lot. <laughs> but like actually like somebody holding a camera up in front of you and like having to talk into a camera is so yeah. weird for me. <laughs> yeah, me, t me too because you don't know uh, I'd like to uh, talk to someone face to face, but when mm -hmm. I talk to a machine, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, <laughs> like having to act like you're talking to a person when yeah. they're just like this with a camera. So. Yeah, <laughs> and I also worried about my performance, you know, because I want to uh, to be a fan of others. You know, ah, she's he's so awkward in front of the camera. <laughs> I will feel embarrassed. One time. Um, we were shooting a, it was like a little ad for my school, and somebody said later, they were like, oh, I saw you on TV, uh -huh. and you just looked like you were trying not to laugh the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I would look, I would search their video, maybe with your name. I don't I think just it's... Saw it. <laughs> Well, I, that one isn't online. That was from when I was in high school. But a uh, high school. Okay. Yeah, I do have some other things online. <laughs> really? Okay, I will yeah. search it. Um, okay, so some of my other questions about Rome. Uh huh. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Which would be? Um, well, I'm gonna skip that question. Okay, here's one. What is the purpose of a crypt? Do you know the word crypt? Crypt? Yeah. No. No, okay. Crypt a like transcript? No. Here, this. Crypt. Okay. So okay. one of one of the attractions it was ah. called the Capuchin Crypt. Yeah. Which uh, here actually the link Oh, it's, it doesn't work. I, I got the link, and I just uh, need to search my line, um, um, one line, line by line, I think. Yes. And so, um, Pantheon. There Pantheon, is. Right? Yeah. Because I can, I can see the, um, the word tomb, a design tomb, tomb mm -hmm. for some of the tomb. Mm-hmm. Was that some of the city's artists and artists, including the painter Raphael, Raphael, and Raphael. former king of Italy.
Did you look at Capuchin Crypt, though? It's really neat. To say the crypt? Here. Capuchin Crypt. Take a look at some photos from that and tell me what you think a crypt is. Um, sorry, can you, can you, um, can you okay. uh, ask the question again? Yes. Um, what is the purpose of a crypt? Ah. Um, a crypt to bury someone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or yeah. you store something. Store some dead bodies. <laughs> yeah, dead bodies in the crypt. Okay, so take a look if you can, at, um, at some images of Capuchin Crypt. It's ah, okay. yeah. dead bodies kind of arranged in an artistic form, and it's very cool. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I, I already... Um, You've seen it before? See, yeah, see these pictures, because I know some of them. Okay. Yeah, but actually, um, it's not... I mean, in Chinese culture, we don't see dead people. Right, because right. um, is there a different way to to take care of the dead after after people die? Yeah, of course. the The most common one is to bury them, and okay. uh, we don't open it again. If uh, if someone else opened the uh, tomb again, mm -hmm. and we, it will be a big offensive action. Yeah, it's the same thing in many cultures. Um, and uh, going, um, we ha we go to the tomb in a special uh, in a special day to re to uh, mem memorize uh, our ancestors. But mm. after, but after the special day, uh, it's not so. I mean, it's if you s um, go to tomb again, and uh, it will be bring you bad luck. So oh, we, really? Yeah. So we don't do that. Oh. So open. That is interesting. I did not know that. Um, <laughs> it's very interesting to learn about. There is a, also a crypt like this in France. Which I I would like to see someday. Um, all the walls are lined in skulls. So this is more of like they're designed in a way so it looks like art. Then there's one in France where just like the walls are all just lined with skulls and bodies. So it's like you're walking down an underground path where the entire thing is just body, like skeletons and bodies. Okay. So um, it it sounds very bit, creepy. Yeah, I'm a little bit afraid of uh, the, dead, the dead bodies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It's pretty creepy. Yeah. Oh, okay. that... Sorry, the movie's name is When in Rome. When in Rome? Yeah. Oh, I know that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have seen that. Yeah. On an airplane, maybe. It was uh, kind of cheesy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, with, a, with a romantic story. Mm hmm. When in Rome. Let me, let me look that up. That was. It's a comedy, a romantic comedy, right? Yeah, I think it's a comedy. Yeah, okay, I know that movie. Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. Yeah. Yes, okay. Kristen Bell. I know that movie. I, yeah, I saw that. Um, oh, no. Okay, Federico, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Why? Your boss is so, so mean. I understand. Um, See you. Bye, see you later. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. Um, what was I going to say? I don't remember. About the movie? <laughs> yeah. I don't, oh, I saw that before I went to Rome. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go see that and that and that. Like, she went and saw all the attractions. Yeah, actually, this movie made a very beautiful introduction for the city. <laughs> yeah, because she, like, drives around in a cab and sees everything, which... Totally yeah. unrealistic because all those things are so spread out all over the city. Yes. Um, okay, my last question for you is: okay. Are there any interesting attractions in your city? 
My city, yeah, uh, I think like Great Wall, Tiananmen mm -hmm. Square, and uh, um, some palace, and uh, yeah, things like that. And also the ancient university in China, mm -hmm. with Kongzi inside of it, and some temples. Yeah, definitely. And uh, also the Olympic buildings like the nest, the bird nest. What is your number one recommendation? Number one recommendation, I think it's the um, Forbidden City. The Forbidden City. Yeah. Forbidden City is very pretty. Uh, I think it's a place which um, um, contains a lot of elements of Chinese culture. So mm -hmm. in this way you can um, get a sense with Chinese culture. I think it's yeah. a wonderful place. I liked, um, I think it was the Temple of Heaven. Was that? Yeah. Temple. yeah. I think that was very pretty too. Um, Beijing was one of the first places I traveled to in Asia. It was, it was very fun when I went. So, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh -huh. So I think all of the places I list before you are going, you, uh, I think you already uh, been there. Yeah, <laughs> I liked it. Um, one of my good friends lived. She was from Beijing, and I lived with her all through university. So I went and visited her. Um, and my dad used to live in China, but he lived in the south. So oh we traveled to Beijing only for a few days, but I was in China for a few weeks. Yeah. yeah, actually, uh, I'm a student too. I mean, um, Tsinghua University, if you know this university. Which university? Tsinghua University. Okay. What do you study? Uh, education. Oh, very good. Yeah. What grade do you want to teach? What level? Uh, I'm, uh, actually, my major is doing research about learning and teaching. I'm not actually okay. teach uh, subjects like Chinese literature or right. mathematics or science. I just do you, uh, you research. Yeah, do research. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna do a quick assessment with you because we have a couple minutes. Okay. So I would like you to use a possessive pronoun. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna ask you a question about about possession, okay. and I would like you to use mine, yours, his, hers, theirs, or ours. Okay. Okay. Um, so since I can't see your video, I'm just going to ask you a question and you make up a sentence, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm going to say, let's see. No, actually, you can, I can open my camera. No, it's okay. We only have a minute. Um, is that pen yours? No, it's my roommate's. Good. Um, can you use a possessive pronoun instead of roommate? No, uh, yeah. No, it's... Uh, his. Good. Um, is that is that closet yours? Yes, it's mine. Excellent. Is that painting yours? No, it's hers. Very good. Um, is the bookshelf yours? No, it's his. Good. Is the book his? <laughs> no, it's mine. Good. <laughs> okay. So that was excellent. Um, we are done for now. I have another class coming up if you'd okay. like to join yeah. me if you have time. Um, but thank you so much. I really enjoyed it and it was good to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Of course. Thank you. Bye. Bye.